Merry Christmas, Gotham City. In breaking news, Gotham is officially crime-free as Batman continues to clean it up. Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to Pause on Animation and Pause on Prime. Haven't done this in a while. Now we have it. And today we're covering one of the new anime movies to hit Amazon Prime, Merry Little Batman. Barely an inconvenience. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie is meant to be a fun reimagining of Batman as fun. Yeah. Yet overprotective dad of Damien. <laughs> now Bruce wants to spend Christmas with his son, but when he ends up going on an emergency mission, of course, Damien's left home alone. Yeah. Hint, hint, to defend his house and eventually Gotham from crime slowly making a comeback. Yeah, that's a mouthful and that's a big call for a movie that is only 92 minutes. Yeah. And before we start with that, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the key buttons on future podcasts and to pause videos. Absolutely. Now, Rascal found out about this for us. And when I saw the trailer, I was kind of like, hmm. <laughs> and she said, do you want to see it? I'm like, why not? Yeah, it's free. We're with Prime. So, hey, it was exclusive and free. And on top of that, it had Luke Wilson. So mm -hmm. I was happy to see that he was voicing a character. And there are also some other uh, voice actors we all know. Fran Pettiscori, Roger Craig Smith, Courtney Taylor. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised to see Natalie Palomides. Palomides, I'm sorry. Yeah. Doing a voice in here. And there are some others we're really not familiar with. David Hornsby, Therese McLaughlin, Brian George, Natalie Phil, I'm sorry, Michael Philly, and more. Right. So, yes, we actually ended up watching this pretty recently because it came out earlier this month. Yesterday. Well, might as well be at this point. And we didn't know what to expect. We just knew this wasn't going to be any of the Batman we knew from different shows and movies and iterations. This one is kind of takes the route of those DC graphic novels in the way of making their own take and their own universe of Batman without changing so much of it where you don't recognize the character. And in case you're interested in knowing, yes, this is literally a palette for a new TV series titled Bat Family that huh. is now being developed. Right. So I guess they really did expect this to be a hit, so they went ahead and greenlit a TV show, which I guess is going to be on Prime as well. And people were kind of on the fence. Some looked forward to it to see Batman not be brooding and dark. And for some who did not care for Damien, how he was originally in Son of Batman, they liked that he was just a little crazy little kid that got into trouble and he acted like a real boy and not an assassin so the ones who wanted watered down Damien were pleased with this. We weren't sure but we gave it a chance and it was an okay movie. It's not like our favorite movie of the year for the holidays or anything I really wouldn't say that but it was a decent film it looks like there was a lot of effort put into it at least when it looked like it didn't in the trailer. True. And when you see the animation and you watch the movie yourself and you go, hmm, this reminds me of something. Well, the two writers are one, regular show writer Mike Roth, and oh. two, Teen Titans Go writer Morgan Evans. Oh my gosh, that explains quite a bit. Because the movie ends up having this sort of mishmash. It wants to be family friendly. It wants to be a little bit of superhero. It wants to be an homage to Christmas movies. Homage to some old Batman stuff. It wants to have surrealism. It wants to have heartfelt. It wants to have some of everything pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I guess the surrealism comes from regular show. Because of the lengths it goes to towards the end of the film. And then stuff that seems kind of like potty humor and things like that. With plot holes comes from Teen Times Go, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's really interesting is that in August of last year, HBO gave up the rights to this film, along with six other projects, including Batman Cape Crusader, and this film is supposed to continue being developed, well, it's out now, but the others are going to be developed as well for Amazon Prime Video. Mm -hmm. They acquired the rights to it all and distributed this film as well as the others. So that's kind of interesting that they found a home for these, mm -hmm. but not a home for Batgirl and the other Batman movie. 
and school. Why and did you not just give everything to Amazon Prime and make everyone happy? Exactly. So they've done this before, mm -hmm. and all the people picked it up and got to see it, but for some reason those films they refused to release. Go figure. So for here, you have to get sort of adjusted to Batman being a uh, good old dad. And for this universe, he succeeds in his mission of cleaning up Gotham. He wanted Gotham to be safe for Damien before he was born, so he rid the city of crime. And it happened. Crime was gone, the villains were gone, Gotham was safe so he could raise Damien there. But then it's not exactly true because they show this utopia in different shots that you see on the news. Yeah. But then almost... To, at the end of the movie, here comes Joker, here comes Poison Ivy, here comes Penguin, yeah. here comes Mr. Freeze, here comes Bane, yeah. here comes all these villains, so if it's cleaned up in this utopia, why are these villains still here? Yeah. And they're free. And they're not in jail. Yeah, and I kind of wondered about that too. It seemed like it was a bit of a plot hole. Right. They're implying that they retired from crime, uh, from from crime, pretty much all together after Batman did that. But they never really went into detail. What did Batman do? so much that it made Go uh, Gotham almost permanently crime free. The only thing that was off to me was that it had been eight years since he did that was right before Damien was born. Eight years later, these villains are only still active low key but they're also like they look like they've aged 80 years. It's only been eight years and it looks like it's been way more than that. They're, they're really wrinkly they're really white haired they're some of them are a little exaggeratedly grotesque, and it's like, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> and that was like one of the off-pointing things about the designs. I kind of like that they wanted to make it look like this is like a really old storybook come to life. Like you're reading like a raw doll book or something that has little odd features, and they've animated those features. And they also took the key from Turtles New Mayhem, where yeah. they said they wanted to look like a child. Yeah. Drew it. Well, they say the same thing that they wanted to look in illustrative and sketch like to reflect Damien's mindset. Well, they succeed. Yeah. And what's funny is I had mentioned something like this when they showed how the characters were drawn and they had to Alfred. Not a villain, of course, but he was so far off looking from what Alfred looks like, he looked like a caricature. He's now we very, 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 very old. Right. He has a hump like Igor, we're not sure why. Right. And he's senile. Right. He's still friendly, he's still the caretaker, mm -hmm. but they made him where there's no way he's gonna be a hero. There's no he way can't he's do helping Batman do anything. Oh, there's no man. way he's in charge of anything. There's no way he's the brains of right? the brawn. Yeah, and he takes him an entire day to go into the city and get some marshmallows and come back. It's nighttime, he finally gets to the store. <laughs> and so with that knowledge is correct, I guess in the mind of a child, He's an old man, but instead of looking just older, he looks like he's in his hundreds. Yeah. So all of the Gotham villains have taken that route too. Everyone is looks uh, looks way beyond what they should be in years, mm -hmm. and they look cartoonishly old. So yeah. I guess in Damien's mind, they're old, and Batman's on his way there, and he's only probably in his forties. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. So I'll say, as far as the voice cast, everyone worked. Yeah. Surprisingly, the voice cast yeah. was stellar. I can't say anything about the voicing. Everyone worked. Yeah, Luke surprising. Wilson was perfect for this, you know, friendly, let's go play catch type of Batman. Yeah. His voice is perfect, and if you watch the CW, you know he played a similar type character in Star... Star Girl. Girl. I keep on Star Child. I've done it so much. Star Girl. <laughs> and he played a similar type character. But he works for here. And the one who voices Damien... We're not familiar with him, but he sounded great. Yeah. And so did the one playing Alfred. So uh, did the one voicing Joker. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that uh, David Hornsby was kind of doing a mixture of, of different characters. characters yeah. All of they said for the character themselves, they wanted to reference a uh, uh, performance of Bob Foss from The Little Prince. Huh. And we haven't seen that movie. Right. I know that's a Netflix film. And it says that he's the perfect foe to a little kid because he's basically like a big peevish child himself. Coaxing, cunning, and apt to rap in irrational tantrums. Mm -hmm. 
But I really didn't see tantrums in here. Mm -hmm. We've seen tantrums for Joker in other movies, but he really didn't have any tantrums no, in here. No, he kind of teased Damien about right. the belt, yes. which is the whole reason the, the plot kicks off. He's supposed to be at home with Alfred, and he makes up an excuse for Alfred to leave the house. He left by himself. These robbers come in Home Alone style. He gets rid of them, and they take his belt that Batman gave him as a present. And the whole movie kick starts with that, with the plot, with him going to Gotham and finding the people that took the belt. And Joker ends up getting involved with this. And this is unfortunately where you see a lot of the plot holes. It's a well-intended movie. There is no spike for Batman here, thank goodness, nor holiday films or Damien or anything like that. And this is a safe watch for any age. Right. It's just... When it gets towards like halfway through the movie, you start seeing some things that don't really follow. And the fact that this entire thing is going off for a belt, it sort of seemed like it was a stretch. It would have been better instead of 92 minutes, it had been 45 minutes to an hour. Because at the 45 minute mark, you're expecting it to be over. Yeah. And then you get to an hour and you're like, this movie's still going on. It just seems superfluous. And unnecessary. I think it could have been locked up in an hour max, and I think it would have been even more enjoyable. Probably, as a short yeah. Movie. There's a lot of things that happen in here that weren't necessary for the progression of the story. That's true. And I think it being shorter would have really, really helped it even more. Right. And especially when it gets to him being in Gotham, and the regular show writer kicks in, and. And, and almost all Gotham burns down because of one accident. So now we know why it escalated that far. And he gets blamed for everything like it's Trigun. And yeah, it sort of escalates without needing to. What I thought was going to be is that they kind of he kind of saves Gotham and has all these adventures without anybody else really knowing. But it ends up going to a regular show. And like I said, Gotham's nearly set on fire. The presents, everything are ruined. The villains are running free. They try to induct Damien to being a villain like them. Because he ruined just about everything. And it does have a happy ending. But it seemed like they were really trying to find conflicts to make the movie keep going. Like right. they didn't want to stop. And they wanted to put everything in. They didn't want to cut anything. So... It seemed like this is one of the few times they should have left some things out mm -hmm. and try to wrap it up sooner because especially you got little kids watching, right. this might make them start tuning out if it's not engaging enough for them and it's going on too long. True. There was a shout out to Catwoman with Damien's cat being named Selena. You're right. She doesn't appear in here. You have Vicki Vale as a news, news person reporter, and yeah. a band leader and she does four different jobs yeah. in here and they're very quick appearances. You have more villains appearances in here. You look really off key. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually, as you said, not bad. So if you're looking for something new to watch, the holiday season that you haven't seen before, then definitely watch this. It's available exclusively on Prime. Yeah. And it's the first DC anime production not released by Warner Brothers. Brothers, sorry. Really released by Amazon MGM Studios. And... James Gunn said that all DC projects will be released under the DC Studios banner mm -hmm. after this. So if you're looking for something that's a fun watch and you really don't have to sit and think, just watch and enjoy it and enjoy something different for the holidays, then Merry Little Batman would be the word for you to go. Right. Again, Definitely. it's available exclusively on Prime. So if you've seen this already, let us know what you think in the comments below. What were your thoughts on it? Uh, is it something you enjoy? Do you think that this is the route they should take Batman in? Mm -hmm. Do you think that the older versions of Batman are passe and this is the way to go? Or do you think this is a nice turn, uh, break from the Batman that we know? Right. Let us know what you think. And again, if you haven't seen it, go to Prime. Give it a watch and come back and let us know what you think. Right. And if you all know already, subscribe for updates, typically through his favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. And we hope you're enjoying this holiday season with your family and friends. And if you would like to request something else during the holiday season, mm -hmm. for this holiday season or next year's, let us know in the comments below. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tune. Fantastic day. Peace. We appreciate you.